Hey, it's Randy from bestoftheinterstate.com. Uh, when we do videos for RVing, we want to, as soon as you click on the video, within five seconds, be into the content. So we're not going to be doing the, hey, this one time at band camp, or I like to listen to me talk on, on video, and I'm going to tell you a story about my dog. No, none of that. We're just going to go right into the content. So here we go. So this video is about us and how we, uh, before last trip, we changed out a whole bunch of stuff. Um, instead of taking it to the shop, pretty much every filter on this thing or replaceable part I found online, I bought, researched, put it on, and here we go. Starting with the air filter. Air filter is right here. See the intake side, outtake side. This is a, a whole can filter. So this whole thing gets thrown out, kind of wasteful, but um, it lasts for, um, they like to say every, every, uh, I don't want to give you a number, but the problem with these is that you still, here's your f filter reader. This shows you how much resistance is going through, through this. So when you read this, this is what you look at to see if that's still good. Now it might be reading still good, but you might have an old filter. The problem is, is that there's paper in here. So the paper that's in the filter that makes up the filter decomposes after a while, gets brittle, falls down, gets sucked in, you got problems, you know. Uh, then here, this is the other part that we replaced. It is the hydraulic filter. Why do I have hydraulics on a motorhome that has electric uh, jacks? Well, the hydraulic system runs the, fan, the cooling fan back there. You can see the fan back there, there you are. So that, it's a hydraulic pump that runs the cooling fan for the radiator uh, going into the radiator fluid, the radiator, uh, the antifreeze. This is a dirty bulb, you can't really see inside it, but it is a uh, clear antifreeze. And when we were here, when we were buying the RV, uh, we saw the clear antifreeze and I was concerned. Um, and then I did some research and the professional Cummins shops sometimes use dye-free um, antifreeze. Dye-free antifreeze is they don't add the extra coloring to it, but it's just as good of an antifreeze. So it had a recent flush, everything was fine. Do the actual test to see what, how, like the, the thresholds of when it freezes, when it boils. Do your test, know what you have in there. Um, this is a, a little trick that I do uh, with the Reflectix. You can buy this at Menards, Home Depot. Um, cut it, just put it in there. It keeps the draft down. Um, sometimes I put tape here, uh, but you know we've been in and out a lot. So um, here is your uh, uh, primary fuel filter. This is a water separator. So the, the fuel is in here, and there's water that sits down in here, separating from the fuel. You drain this. Um, so just look this up online, replace that. Uh, this is your secondary fuel filter. So look that up online, replace that. When you're tightening these, do not tighten them too tight. Um, read the manufacturer. I, I believe it's run it up snug to where it just makes enough friction with this to stop. And then you go another um, half turn or uh, f uh, full turn after that. Look that up, be sure. Um, Simple stuff. Uh, so these belt back here, I was kind of intim intimidated by these belts, um, but they're really simple to put on. So I'm gonna show you this, this main belt here, right there. This is the tensioner right there. So the tensioner, you come in with a half inch drive, put the half inch drive in there, and you turn it um, away to where this releases the tension. Now this is loose, you take this off, thread it out, thread it on, um, and you know, you're in business, you're on the road. You know, that's that's a good that's a good strength right there, uh, a good tension. Um, you never want them too tight, um, but there is a uh, r threaded rod right there that comes in, scrolls down, that when, you, when you move it, you might have to take one bolt off, uh, loosen it, um, just to loosen the, the ability for that uh, threaded rod to be able to move. And then this tilts down and you get this off. 
and then you replace it. Um, what I do is, uh, what else back here? Nothing else back here. So the other thing that I do after I replaced, now one thing you're gonna have to do is you have to look up online, do your research, go to O'Reilly's, go to AutoZone, buy the parts there, or you can buy them online. Sometimes they're even cheaper online, but make sure they are the right part number. Otherwise, you will not be happy with yourself. Um, and I'm speaking from experience. So this is kind of like the, the tool bay. Um, see right here, see? That's the old belt. I just put it in the, the new box where the new ones came in. And then um, you kind of see how it's starting to eat up a little bit. You can see the bands in there. It was time for it to be replaced. But now I got belts, you know, if we're on the side of the road and the belt uh, breaks for some reason, I think those are called alligator backs, the green backed ones. I think those are the strongest ones on the market right now. Uh, so, you know, I usually try to do the Tim Allen approach of going overkill. Um, so, you know, if one comes off, you got another one in the, in the hopper there. So what else did we do? I'm gonna, here, let me climb underneath. Take a look at the snow. Oh. All right, so we're underneath the RV in the back bay. There is the oil filter. Now this is some some insane amount of oil. You're gonna have to find out which one it is, um, but it is an insane amount of oil to change out. Uh, but it's all you know, plug and play. It's all right here. Um, and then your air filter. Why do I have an air filter? Well, because you have air brakes, and the air brakes require the air to be dry because if moisture gets in there moisture can freeze, especially with how cold it is right now. And it just creates a whole whole bunch of problems. Um, so there, there you have your air filter. And this one's kind of hard to get off, but you come in, um, what I did was I took a cloth ratcheting tie down and I made my own um, over, kind of oversized filter wrench. And uh, that backed right off. What you wanna do before you change this though, clean up everything around here to make sure that you don't have any sort of dust or, or grime that's gonna fall inside, you know, all this in here because that won't be good. When you hear that air brake, that psh, um, at the beginning of the show, it is, um, up front you hear that air, but then back here when you hear, sometimes hear that, that air, uh, every time you hear like a diesel truck that psh, that is um, releasing all the, the, the water. That's the air dryer. It's getting rid of all the moisture within the airlines. I'm gonna get out of here because it's really cold. Oh. Let's see, what else? That's all I got for you today. Uh, but the one thing I want you to do is not be intimidated by this. You know, you got the, the warranties, the extended warranties. They will talk to you until they're blue in the face about how intimidating these things should be and they should not be intimidating to you. Think about $250, $300 a month for an extended warranty. And you could be putting that money away, uh, putting it into your own insurance account. Um, pretty much when you break everything down on these things, um, you could easily self-insure these um, with a little bit of empowering yourself to believe that you can, you know, go at, you know, changing this stuff out. Um, I like to modular, modulize. Is that even a word? I like to think of everything um, as its own self. So like this, like water heater, right? That's a water heater. A manufacturer makes that water heater. They have parts online. I can buy parts for this thing. Maybe not a water heater, but think about the transmission or the engine. If you actually read what's covered on those extended warranties, it's actually a crapshoot if they're even gonna cover that or not in the first place. So you might be paying $300 a month for an extended warranty, and they might not even cover what your actually your worst fear is that might break. Um, I know one, one thing that was concerning to me was 
the EGR valve. That's an exhaust gas um, radiator. And that uh, radiator sometimes degrades and rusts away and then you get a whole bunch of exhaust issues um, and engine issues. And I read in the extended warranty that it does not cover that. Same thing with transmissions. I gotta tell you, this uh, it's really cold. Um, the, the one thing that was most concerning to me is th this thing's got a huge Allison transmission in it. And this transmission, you know, is built for things a heck of a lot heavier than this thing. So um, when I, I, I know fire departments that run Allison transmissions in their fire trucks and they beat the living hell out of them and they don't have barely they have they barely have any problems with the transmission so um if you take care of this thing drive it the right way and you're <laughs> it's this everything is so under ran when it comes to the chassis if you look if you look for a good chassis like a spartan chassis um this is a spartan chassis um freight line is probably a close second on that um uh, or if you look for a good transmission, the Allison transmission, I think the five or 6,000, that's where you want to be, uh, series. Uh, they can pull the 10,000s. They'll, they'll make some diesel pushers with really underrated transmissions to where you can pretty much only tow like 3,000 pounds. So just, you know, do your research, do, do uh, your Columbo-like research, and it'll pay off. It takes thinking of, of things in a modular fashion and not thinking of everything as a whole and being like, wow, I'm, I'm really intimidated by this. I'm gonna buy $300 a month. Spend that money, put it towards camping, put it towards traveling, put it towards fuel, put some money away for self-insuring. I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, stop giving these people your money. This don't be intimidated. I hate when, when businesses intimidate people. I, I hate it. Um, I'll leave you with one um, last little trick here that I do on the on the motorhome. But uh, before I do that, I'd like to talk to you about when when you travel on the interstate, instead of just sitting there in silence, take in the views, but be listening to an audiobook. You know, you could be learning while you're on the road, uh, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. We love to listen to audiobooks. Uh, most of the time, you get more out of audiobooks than if you were to just read it. Uh, the authors usually narrate them and they share personal stories and they ad-lib. It's pretty cool. Um, go to audibletrial.com slash roadtrip. That's audibletrial.com slash roadtrip. You know the company Audible. Uh, they, they have an uh, application to where you can listen to audiobooks. Uh, they'll give you a free audiobook. You have to put your credit card in, uh, but they don't charge you for the first month. You get a free audiobook, test it out, um, and then it's really affordable for books after that. Uh, they support us. Uh, we like to support them um, in every way we can. So audibletrial.com slash roadtrip, and then go to bestoftheinterstate.com, and we just added two new businesses to that uh, platform. Uh, great people, great company. Um, one in Anawan, Illinois on I-80. Exit 33 in Anawan, Illinois off of I-80. It's called Paxton's Corner Coop. Great ice cream, great cupcakes, great people. Uh, go say hi to Stephanie and Brett Paxton down there. Uh, Paxton's Corner Coop, you can go to bestoftheinterstate.com, go to I-80 um, in Illinois, you'll, you'll see them. And then the Vault, we also signed them up. Uh, the Vault, great people. Uh, if you go to, uh, they're in uh, Sheridan, Wyoming. Uh, it was an old bank that got turned into a wine tasting. Um, back in the 1800s, there was a bank. Uh, the Vault is actually the, the wine tasting room. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, great people, John and Jess, uh, go say hi to them. They make their own wine over there. Great people, this is what it's all about, It's finding those people along the interstate that make it a better place. Uh, that, one, that one tip, steel wool. Steel wool. Sometimes, if you leave your block heater on, even just naturally, the engine's a little warmer than the other part. It's got more mass to it. It'll absorb some of that heat from the inside. Uh, rodents and nibbles. I call I call like a little my, like mouse nibbles. 
Nibbles will find his way in there and, and take shelter and bring a whole bunch of his friends and you don't want that. Steel wool, they can't bite into that, or maybe they can, but uh, <laughs> we'll find out. But um, put steel wool uh, on other places too, like by the wet bay and, and wherever you have uh, wires or cables coming up that they can you know climb up into. I hope this was useful to you. Bestoftheinterstate.com. Go check those businesses out. Get them into your, fit them into your travel plans. And then go to uh, audibletrial.com slash roadtrip. Get yourself a free audiobook. Start learning, start loving, start traveling. We'll see ya.